Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ocarina of Time Dungeon Guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dreaded Water Temple. This is, in many players' opinions, the hardest temple in Ocarina of Time. I certainly think it's the most confusing. We're going to have control over the water levels here in the Water Temple, and we're going to be raising them and lowering them over and over, and we're going to be sinking and floating using the Iron Boots over and over. Certainly doesn't help that we're going to be sort of backtracking a lot while playing in this dungeon, as we need to visit certain rooms multiple times as the water level changes. Right away, I'm going to come over here into this right side hallway, drop down using the iron boots, and uh, this is kind of a funny little spot right here. I try to do this as early as possible because I do not want to forget to do this. I'm simply going to pull this block as far as I can, and believe it or not, that's actually all I'm going to do at this point. Uh, funny enough, uh, we're going to be entering that sort of hallway from a different angle much, much later on in the video. And actually, it's one of the final things that we do in the Water Temple, and we're going to actually push that block somewhere else. So that is certainly a sort of long-term investment. We won't see uh, the, the reason that was important for quite a while. But having done that, I am now going to sink down to the bottom of the Water Temple, or at least this, this hub room here. And here I'm going to enter the hallway that has those unlit torches. And we're going to see a familiar face here. There's Princess Rudo. Of course, this is the first time that we've seen her since Jabu Jabu's belly. And don't have, uh, don't, don't have PTSD flashbacks of Lord Jabu Jabu's belly where we had to pick her up and uh, not lose her and use her for puzzles and weighing down switches and stuff like that. It's not going to be how the Water Temple works. She's just going to kind of tell us some things and essentially disappear. So after reminding us that we are going to get married three or four times, she's going to swim off, and that'll be the last we see of her until after the dungeon. You can probably guess where we will see her next. But anyway, here we've got a room with some torches and a locked door. Unfortunately, since the water level is by default when you first enter the water temple all the way up at the top, we can't really do anything in that room right now. There's also, it looks like a breakable wall right there. That one's very easy to forget. Try to remember that one. But of course, we'll revisit that later on. And up here, after removing the iron boots, we can float all the way up to this room right here, where we find a Triforce symbol on the wall. This is one of three spots in the Water Temple, where you can adjust the water level of the entire dungeon. And each one will set the water level to a different level. So I can't, I can't just sit here and cycle through all the different water levels by just playing Zelda's Lullaby over and over. So if there's a specific water level you want, you have to go to the right plaque on the wall, which is very annoying. But anyway, moving on. Entering this room right here, there's a bunch of these spike ball enemies. I, don't, I forget the name of these guys. But they're pretty easy to take care of just by using the hook shot. Just wait for them to uh, kind of retract their spines, and they kind of look like they turn into a rock there. So shoot them when they look like rocks. And having done that, a big chest will spawn, giving us the map. Nice to be able to get the map so early on in the dungeon. That way we're not running around completely blind. And by dropping down, we'll be able to revisit this room again. And we can actually light these torches on the side since the water's gone. But yeah, that's sort of the going theme of the Water Temple is entering a room uh, and deciding that the water should or shouldn't be there and then going and adjusting the water level so that you can actually complete the puzzles. It's just really unfortunate that you have to, you know, run all over the dungeon in order to set the water levels. So you can enter a room and be like, oh, I, I need to change the water, water level for this, and then you get to go on a, you know, a hike to set the water level to the right level. Collecting a small key there by killing those clam guys. Those guys can be sort of tricky to kill. Um, they show a weak spot when you get a certain distance away from them, so I like to load the hookshot while locking onto them and then stepping forward and then you release the button shooting the hookshot. Here I'm making a little bit of a mistake. There's a bombable floor right here. I believe there's a gold Skulltula back there. <laughs> but as I drop that bomb, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't need to go in there. This is not the Skulltula guide. If you are looking for a Skulltula guide, stay tuned. There will be one on the channel coming soon. By the time you watch this, it may already be done, so be sure to check out my channel. I can push this block now that the water is lowered. Before that platform that I hopped onto, just a few seconds ago to start pushing this block, the, that platform actually floats. It goes up and down with the level of the water in the water temple. 
So since the water level is at the bottom, the platform is at the bottom as well. Before the, uh, since the platform wasn't there, the, the block was up off the ground and you couldn't grab it. Link, Link wasn't tall enough. But anyway, moving on, we're going to come on over here. Again, by toggling the iron boots on and off and on and off. You're going to get real familiar with that by the end of this dungeon. We've got a room right here with a sort of a water geyser shooting out of the floor down there. And a switch off to the right hand side. By hitting that switch, the geyser will shoot up and you're actually able to stand on top of that geyser. I'm not sure that's how water works, but hey. Video game logic. Anyway, this is a pretty cool room right here. We've got a pool of water that's got a whirlpool going on in the center. It will kind of drag you around, so be ready for that. But otherwise, there's like a, a big metal dragon down there, which is pretty unexpected. That's pretty neat. I'm going to use the iron boots to sort of stand on its body. I'm assuming that's part of its body. And anyway, you can't see it yet, but there's actually a closed door over there. And we're going to open it by hitting the switch inside the dragon's mouth. And we're going to shoot this target over here, or try to. <laughs> and before that, that door slams shut, we're going to try to deal with these clams. They will sort of body block you right there. I kind of made an executive decision to just sort of dive in there. That's something that you can do, is you just roll in there or whatever you need to do in order to get inside this little room before the door slams shut, and then you can <laughs> worry about dealing with the clams after you get inside. Having done that, we'll float on up here and collect yet another small key. And otherwise, that will be another dead end. So we can hit that switch there. I used a bomb because it kind of gives you maybe a, another second or two <laughs> to get closer to the door that you're opening. And I'm going to save a couple pauses here by just diving. Didn't want to turn on the iron boots and then have to turn them off again. So whenever you can, <laughs> whenever you see an opportunity to do that, go for it because it may keep you sane a little bit longer. Re-entering this room again. This is the room with the geyser in the center. Luckily this time there's just a hook shot target for us to hit. We don't have to mess with the uh, switch over there. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. We could just hit it with an arrow if we had to, but... A little bit faster not having to do that. And this is actually pretty funny right here. I was like, ooh, another opportunity to save a couple pauses. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a genius. Look at how good at video games I am. And then I'm here. <laughs> and uh, the water level isn't quite high enough for me to climb out of that hole. So now I have to pause the game, turn on iron boots, and then hookshot out, and then remove iron boots again. Again, this is, this is Water Temple. This is the Water Temple experience. Aren't you so glad you're in the Water Temple right now? All right, and having done that, we're pretty much done with everything that we can do down here at the bottom level with the water all the way down. So this is where you find out that that center column of the water temple is actually, like, hollow. Is that what you want to call it? It's a place that you can go inside. And looking around, we're going to see one of these hookshot targets. And on top of this platform right here, we're actually going to see uh, the second place where we can adjust the water level of the water temple. And now what you're going to want to do is pay real close attention to this cutscene that's coming up. Because there is a door here in this room. And when we raise the water level, we'll be able to walk out of that door. But I don't know if you saw it right there, but as that that floaty platform came up, it actually revealed a tunnel, like a, another pathway down there. So what we're going to do is sink down there and take care of that leg of the dungeon before going through that door up there. And this is, this is what got me for days and days as a little kid. It may have even been weeks, to be completely honest with you. But yeah, I, I remember the entire neighborhood. We were all we we all had gotten this game, whether it was for you know Christmas or whatever. We all we all had Ocarina of Time and we're playing it for the first time at the same time. And basically, the entire street was stuck in the Water Temple. So I, I know the Water Temple is hard when the entire neighborhood is stuck in the same room. Essentially, you know, uh, there's something wrong with it. You know, it, it's really it's really kind of funny because if that cutscene was just a little bit better. If it had shown that pathway just a little bit better, I actually think the reputation of the Water Temple would not be what it is today. But anyway, please excuse my rambling. As you can see, we hit that switch right there. It opened up that, uh, that sort of holding pen with all those enemies. They came, like, spilling down, and we took them all out, which opened up the other door, allowing us to come over here, grab another small key. 
And that is really all that's going on in this section of the dungeon, so we'll be able to toggle the iron boots on and head back out the way we came. Shout out to my little brother. I believe he was actually the one that found this tunnel. He was the, he was the one that solved the mystery. The mystery that plagued the neighborhood for who knows how long. I said weeks before. I, I, I actually think that may be accurate. In any case, we're going to float up here. And finally, we'll be able to head through this door. It's kind of funny where you pop out. I mean, you may have, depending on your sense of direction, you may have expected this, but here we're now back in the main hub room of the Water Temple. We're sort of on this balcony that we may have caught a glimpse of earlier as we were sinking down when we first entered the dungeon. There was an eyeball switch there, but I know that we don't have the tools needed to get through it, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. We'll revisit that in a little bit. Coming down this hallway, we will find yet another room. This room is kind of unique in that I believe you can do this room with the water level either at the top or the middle. So a rare instance of being able to do a room with the water in, in, in uh, two different settings. We've got a big chest here, and I'm going to be sort of cheeky. That switch over there uh, removes the geyser for a few seconds, so of course you can just hit the switch with the hook shot or the bow. But if you roll at it and hit A with the right timing, you can actually open the chest without flipping the switch. So that's just me showing off. I do definitely think you should give it a shot, though. It's kind of satisfying to do. And it's not very hard. Back out in the hub room yet again. Oddly enough, there's no hallway on this level at that on the north side of the hub room. It almost looks like there should be something there, but there's just not. And here we go, dropping down to the bottom of the dungeon yet again. This is a small key that's extremely easy to forget. There's me going around the long way. I was sort of lost there. I was looking for the torches. So we're going back yet again to where we saw Rudo. Remember this room where we lit the torches? But since the water level is in the middle level now, as we come up here, instead of floating all the way to the top where we saw that first plaque where we were able to change the water level, we can get to this center, the second story here, if you will. We briefly saw this breakable wall as we were floating up before, but we weren't able to do anything about it. So yes, yet again, a very difficult key to remember, easy to pass up. But you know, uh, I, I forgot to mention, we just recently collected the compass, and the compass shows the treasure chests on the map. So I think... I think the compass in the Water Temple may actually be what I believe to be the most important compass in the game. Because it really does help you backtrack and find all those chests, ju just like that one, that you may have passed up earlier on in the dungeon. Having done that, we will float back up to the second level where the water level is still set. And we're going to find a locked door over here. This is going to lead to where you set the water level to the highest level. We have yet to see that. Here's a funny little water elevator that we get to use. And uh, <laughs> watch out for that guy. That guy will get you. I definitely think that that enemy is set up intentionally to fall down on you. Because you kind of need to stand on this water and shoot the switch. So that guy will come down and clobber you. It's definitely happened to me... I don't even know how many times. But coming on up here, here's the third and final plaque. Again, where we will be able to set the water level to its highest. And it's kind of funny because at... At, at, at first glance, it's like, what... What is different now? I mean, we, we entered the water temple and the water was at its highest. So what did we accomplish? Well, we have keys, and that, that literally makes all the difference in the world. When we first entered the dungeon, we weren't able to come this way. Or at least we didn't have enough keys to go very deep this way. And this is a pretty important leg of the dungeon, as you will soon see. This room right here is pretty fun. We've got this big waterfall with these platforms that are sort of being washed down, or so I'd like to think. And they have these hookshot targets on it. So what we're going to be doing is sort of frantically climbing up this. We're going to be trying to shoot the next platform before it gets too much lower. Oh yes, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump off on accident. 
if I remember right, I, I, I thought to myself that I could maybe jump to the first one, and I'm actually not sure if you can do that. Uh, but as I began the jump, I, at the last second, changed my mind, and I pulled back on the control stick, but it was sort of a point of no return. So anyway, attempt number two, looking much better. Try not to stress too much about this. These platforms move pretty slowly, so you can kind of take your time, even if you're not very good at aiming the hook shot. And worst case, you know, you fall down the waterfall and you just respawn at the beginning of the room. It's not like an instant game over or anything like that. Anyway, coming into this room right here, we will see what I believe may be the only instance of one of these toggleable switches. We've seen those sort of diamond-shaped switches elsewhere in the game, even in this dungeon. And they usually turn yellow and they're sort of a, a, a one-time switch. But in this room right here, you can actually hit this switch multiple times and it'll go from blue to red, which I think looks really cool. But anyway, as you can see, the switch raises and lowers the water just within this room. It's not like it's... <laughs> this is not adjusting the water level throughout the dungeon, so... This water level is sort of independent from the rest of the water temple, so don't stress about that. <laughs> don't, don't try to come back into this room to change the water level for a different room. That definitely will not work. So as, as you can see, we're just toggling the water level up and down, which also raises these statues. So, a fun little puzzle there. Hitting it one last time will actually raise the statue that's underneath us. For a little, uh, a little elevator action there. Pretty neat. And this is kind of a funny spot. There's this like-like on the other side of these <laughs> spikes. So the game's just like, dude, just use the hookshot target, man. And the like-like over there, the, the monster is saying, Please fall into my mouth, I'm hungry. <laughs> you, you have no idea how long I've been here. But as you can see, I was able to bait the monster off to the left, which allowed us to safely shoot over and make it into this room here. And this, of course, is a mini boss fight. I have so much I want to say about this boss fight and about this room, and I know I won't have enough time, so I'm going to do my best here. First things first, we're about to see a really cool little detail. Watch, watch Link's reflection in the water. Watch it. I love this. This is so cool. It's still there, but when you walk over the island, it disappears, man. How cool is that? And then you spin around, and then it's like the reflection is turned into Dark Link, who, of course, is the mini-boss of this room. Alright, so Dark Link. This is a very challenging boss. Um, he will... you'll quickly realize that he kind of copies you. If you swing at him, he'll swing at the same time, and most of the time his your, your swords will clash and you won't really get anywhere. And I actually spent quite a bit of time trying to come up with a consistent setup or, or, or a consistent strategy for killing Dark Link. And I actually didn't come up with a whole lot. I did some stuff with bombs that we'll take a look at here. But in reality, I think what I was most happy with is just not locking onto him and just mashing B and just going at him. Don't stab. See what just happened right there? I accidentally stabbed at him and he will jump up and stand on your sword which uh, is not any good. But yes, as you can see, um, if you've been struggling with this boss fight, um, like if you've been trying to play patiently, it just doesn't seem to work, man. As, and as I say that, I'm starting to struggle to hit him. And eventually what I think I end up doing is, I, I mentioned I was coming up with a setup with uh, bombs involved. Um, I decided to give that one last shot. Basically what I do is pull out a bomb, and while locked on, I believe it was like I pulled it back and right on the control stick. And it just so happens to maintain a certain distance to uh, when it blows up, it, it deals damage to Link. I think if the explosion is too close, I think he dodges it or something like that. But if it's at the right distance, it will still hit him. So that was kind of why you needed to pull back and push right. It doesn't... Like I said, I wasn't very happy with that uh, setup. So uh, for the most part... I think you should just do like I did, and don't really think about it a whole lot. Just uh, don't lock onto him. I think you don't want to lock onto him because if you're locked on, you'll do a lot more stabs, even if it's on accident, and you can't hurt him when you stab at him. Now, I've heard that there is a certain sword attack that you can do with a different sword. It's not the master sword, but it's a certain, uh, you know, big sword. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. 
But uh, I, I hear that there is a, a certain swing that you can do. I think it's like holding to the right or something like that. There's like a diagonal slash that you can do with that that weapon that uh, Dark Link cannot uh, deflect or dodge. I've never actually tried that. And I, I believe most people probably will not have that certain sword at this point in the game. So I'm not really sure how much I want to talk about that. I definitely don't know anything about it. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I, I hope that helped at least a little bit. I don't really know how helpful it was. I almost kind of feel like Dark Link could uh, use a video all on his own. But it looks like we should probably move on from the Dark Link fight now. If anything, remember, press B a lot. <laughs> That's my... That's Haskey's pro tip for the Dark Link fight. Press B a lot, go crazy. Anyway, though. Picking up a fairy in this sort of... ...twisting cavern down here. This is a pretty cool looking area. These vortexes that will pull you down, so you want to avoid those. And there's this little tiny platform on this inside corner right here, which allows you to hit this eyeball switch. Which will briefly... ...open up this door. And that was kind of funny right there, I... Decided to jump across, but I could have used the hook shot. It was probably a faster way to do that. You can use the hook shot on all of the chests in the game. You'll be pulled towards the chest when you use the hook shot on them, that is to say. And look at this, we're back up here. We're back uh, in the uh, whirlpool room with the dragon down at the bottom. When we were first in here, we did see up and briefly take a quick glance at that sort of hallway up there. So we were somewhat aware of its existence. Maybe. So this is looking very familiar. I, I haven't even mentioned that we got the, the long shot yet. I, I, I'm really sorry about that. I was so caught up in the Dark Link fight. But yes, we now have the long shot. As the name suggests, it's pretty much the same thing as the hook shot. It just has a much longer chain. It must be twice as long, if not longer. I've never actually thought about how much longer. So now that we have that, some new doors will be opened for us. That's, uh, <laughs> proverbial doors. <laughs> There's not going to just suddenly be open doors because we got the, the long shot. And at this point, I think I forgot what I wanted to do next. So kind of funny. For the first time in the, uh, dungeon guide, I'm looking at the map trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing next. <laughs> and to this point, I have remembered what I need to do. But unfortunately, what I need to do is I need to get the water level to the middle section, which is unbelievably annoying. Basically, what has to happen is we need to come over here. This, again, is where Rudo was. And since the water level is at the top of the dungeon, we're going to be floating all the way up to the top of this room. And we're going to be playing Zelda's Lullaby in front of the plaque there, which is going to send the water level not to the middle level, but to the bottom because we don't really have a whole lot of control over <laughs> what level the water level is changing to. Again, this this plaque, its one and only job is sending the water level to... I'm, I'm, I'm still not sure where to go next. This is funny. I, I, I've got the right idea. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make a mistake here. But I'm gonna be sending the water level down to the bottom. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Yes, this plaque only sends the water level to the bottom. I, I would love to just sit here and play Zelda's Lullaby in front of this plaque over and over and just get the water level to where I want it, but you can't do that. If I were to try and play the ocarina in front of this again, we wouldn't get that, um... What is it, the musical staff? We just don't have the option to play Zelda's Lullaby. I mean, you can play Zelda's Lullaby in front of it, it just doesn't do anything. So now that the water level is down at the bottom, We'll come back over here, back into this center column room thing, and we'll be able to set the water level back to the middle. This one, at least, I'm glad is it's right in the middle of the dungeon. It's pretty easy to access, whereas the first and third level plaques are a little bit further away. Can take some time to get to either one of those. There's a bit of a secret to the third level plaque, which involves a certain... Uh, a song that you create at Lake Hylia. Again, I'm trying to avoid certain spoilers. But uh, if you know what I'm talking about, whoever remembers to do that. I realize that's super vague. You saw Na Navi fly off there. That was actually related to that. There's a song that you can play there, which will create... It'll make a certain uh, something or other spawn. <laughs> and you can use the hook shot to hit it. But you do have to have the long shot, though, I believe. So that thing is probably only helpful around this part in the dungeon. 
But yeah, anyway, I, <laughs> I probably just confused everyone watching by trying to allude to that certain song. I probably could have not mentioned it, but I am aware that it's a thing. In any case, that block right there you may or may not recognize. Clear back at the beginning of the video, we moved that block just a little ways, and we finally got to the other side of it. We needed the, the long shot this whole time. And we were able to get into that other hallway, which allowed us to push that block out of the way and get yet another small key. Nice. Alright, and what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to raise the water level back up to the topmost level. That's actually sort of in preparation for what happens after what I'm going to do next. I'm actually going to be going down to the bottom of the dungeon yet again, if you can believe it. But since I'm here, and since I'm going to need the water level back up at the top, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. So here we are yet again in this room with the water elevator. <laughs> Dodging the blue tektite, I believe is what they're called. Yet again, we don't want that guy coming down on top of our heads. Hate when that happens. Playing Zelda's Lullaby one last time, and I do believe... I may be saying this too soon, but I believe this is the last time we changed the water level. So feel free to celebrate that if you're following along. And we'll put on the iron boots and head back down to the bottom of the dungeon again. So coming up here, we're actually going to be going into a room that, believe it or not, we haven't actually been through yet. There was actually a way we could have gone this entire time down here. Oh, <laughs> I need to check the map again. It's the north side past Husky. North side. Yeah, this, this hallway over here, there was nothing stopping us from entering this room this entire time. I just never did because I knew that I needed the long shot. Right here, if I turn around, there's going to be a... If you can get the line of sight for it, there is a... Hookshot target there. That that one you can actually hit with the previous hookshot. But that one way over there on the other side of the room, you need the long shot for that. And basically, what this leg of the dungeon is, is getting the boss key. So entering this room right here, see a pretty impressive looking room with these boulders kind of rolling out of nowhere. So this, uh, <laughs> the fact that there's boulders rolling around down there and there's this sort of wall in the middle of this room, it kind of prevents you from using the iron boots. So I typically just <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Feels like Frogger. So we'll just kind of sprint on through that. Hopefully not take too much damage. It looks like we did pretty good. Uh, I love this room. This room is kind of tricky. So taking a look around here, we see that the way out of this room is way high up above us. So we will be changing the water level here. Uh, you can actually see a switch down there. Now that's one of those momentary switches. I'm not actually going to step on it to show you that. Just take my word for it. Yes, you can uh, hop, you know, you turn on the iron boots and go down there and step on it. But the moment you walk off of it, it's going to reset. And what that switch does is it does raise the water level. So check this out. We got a breakable wall over here. And we're going to pop that open. Gonna take a look at what's inside. <laughs> that was funny. I, I wanted to get away from the explosion. Accidentally jumped. Ah, oh, great. So that big block will be useful for weighing that switch down, but the issue is how in the world are we going to get around that corner? <laughs> and there is a less breakable looking breakable wall over here, if that makes sense. So that's kind of a, I think, a well designed puzzle. Basically, you see this block and you're like, great, I can use that to weigh down the switch, but you're but I, I have to get to the back side of the block in order to push it around. How am I going to do that? And then you walk over there. And the wall does look a little suspicious, but you may not have noticed it until you realized that you needed to get back behind the block, so... I think the best puzzles in gaming are the ones that make you feel smart. And it takes a certain... It takes a, a good designer to make things like that. You know, it's sort of an unfortunate thing for, in, in, the, in the world of game design, if you will. If you can if you can tell the player exactly what to do without the player knowing that you're telling them, like they're gonna feel like they're a genius. 
and you get no credit for it <laughs> as, as the designer, you know? Sort of a thankless job. Video game design theory aside, we'll go ahead and <laughs> use that block to weigh that switch down, which will permanently raise the water level in this room. And we'll be able to finally reach this ledge and move on to the next room. This room right here is actually pretty familiar. We saw a room previously that had a, a big drop, and in the middle of the room there was this water geyser that would shoot up and we would be able to jump across it. This is essentially the same thing, only this time there's multiple water jets. I'm going to be kind of silly there and skip the third one for absolutely no reason. I just know that you can do it, so I do it every time. <laughs> Hey, maybe, maybe it allows you to get by those enemies a little bit easier, I don't know. Uh, this is actually the same room where we saw those boulders before, but we're kind of like in the, 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 the backstage of that room. We can kind of see where the boulders are coming from, which I think is kind of cool. And make no, don't make a mistake here and go back into that room. What you actually want to do is head back this way and there's almost this hidden path over here. And... When we pop out here, there's going to be one last locked door. This is where you find out you missed a key somewhere. I'm so sorry. Having said that, hopefully since you're following along, you weren't missing any keys. And you're able to open this up and get the boss key for yourself. And now you know you're on the final stretch of the Water Temple. Oh boy, oh boy, let's get out of here. So a little, little pro tip for you here. You can actually just take a shortcut by playing the Serenade of Water and just teleporting back to Lake Hylia. It's actually faster than walking all the way out of here. <laughs> I have just forgotten that you can do that. I'm going to remember here in just a few seconds. It's like right now, I'm like, wait a second, why am I walking? <laughs> I should be teleporting. So we'll go ahead and play the Serenade of Water and enjoy a little bit of a shortcut. So we'll go ahead and jump cut back to the beginning of the dungeon. You didn't miss much, I was just spawning in Lake Hylia and I just used the iron boots just to drop down to the entrance of the dungeon yet again. And now this is where you may need to bring the water level back up to the topmost level, but we already set that up, which is kind of nice. And over here is where the... the boss of the water temple is. You do need the long shot to reach that target, but no problems there. This is a pretty annoying little room. This slope is uh, steep enough that if you stop or get hit by these traps, you slide all the way back down. So that may take a couple of attempts there to get through all that. But if um, you can sort of adjust your timing or the speed that you're going up it without stopping, you can kind of slow yourself down by darting left or right. So give that a shot if you're struggling with that. But in any case, it's time for the boss of the water temple. And I'll be upfront with you here. I do really struggle in this particular boss fight in this clip. I just really struggle to land any hits for whatever reason. And it's kind of funny because there's a technique that I was aware of at the time that makes this boss fight pretty easy that for whatever reason as I was recording this, I just completely forgot about. So this boss fight ends up going on for like seven minutes or something. I won't make you watch that. It just, it's pointless. I mean, maybe we can watch a little bit of it just to have fun, poke, poke fun at past me. But uh, at, at some point we'll do a jump cut and we'll show you a pretty easy technique that makes Morpha not too bad at all. So there he is. Like I just said, Morpha's the name. His little... I'm gonna call it a core for this this video. Because I don't know what the heck else to call it. <laughs> that little pink thing? Yeah, that's that's like his main body. That's what we're trying to hit. Otherwise, he's he can spawn like these uh, arms of water. And you want to be careful because if they touch you, he'll actually pick you up and hurl you across the arena, which is kind of crazy. And uh, basically, at any point, if you can land a shot with the hook shot on him, you can pull him up to dry land, just like right there. And I was able to pull out the Megaton Hammer for some reason. I'm not really sure why I'm trying to use the Megaton Hammer. The Megaton Hammer does the same amount of damage as the Master Sword, as far as I know. So there's really no point in trying to fight with it. Again, just not really having the greatest of fights here. But yeah, as you can probably tell, the hardest part of Morpha is just landing a hit on him with the hook shot. What I do try to do is I try to stand in line, like watch his arm come down, just like that. 
I'll actually kind of get behind the arm because that way you're not trying to hit Morpha as he goes, you know, say left or right. He's You're trying to hit him as he's kind of going like towards you and away from you. So it's it's easier to land the shot. But anyway, uh, as, as I said before, this fight just basically goes on like this for way, way, way too long. So let's go ahead and uh, skip to a much, much better clip and I'll show you a cool little trick. So here we go, restarting the fight now. So yes, I, I did eventually win that fight. I just was not happy with the clip. But here we go. Attempt number two. So what you need to know about this trick here is that when you drag Morpha onto dry land, if you continue to hit him with the hook shot, not only will he not be able to get back into the water, but you can sort of drag him around wherever you want, which is sort of a, an interesting little quirk about this boss fight. That was me just showing off just sort of a normal cycle there. That wasn't me trying to do the, the trick. I'm going to try to set up for it now. But basically what's going to happen is I'm going to drag him into the corner. And basically I'm going to put him into the corner and then kind of put Lynx back to the open arena. And what's going to happen is when I hit him, it's just going to push him further into the corner. And then I'll just be able to hit him over and over and over again. So that was pretty close. I could have dragged him further into the corner before I started to uh, attack him. So we'll try that one more time. I'm pretty sure this next one, I'll get it. Oh, actually, actually, no, I'll just get punched in the face by Morpha's water arm. I'm actually lucky he didn't pick us up and throw us across the room. But again, you can stand next to the, uh, you know, the, the, the edge of the pool, if you will, and just keep shooting into the water, but the chances of you actually hitting Morpha is pretty slim. I usually just wait for his arm to come out just like that. And here we go, much better. He's stuck in the corner, he's not going anywhere. We're gonna hit him over and over and over again. And that was much better than my previous attempt at that boss. And we'll watch Morpha evaporate, I think. I like how even in the boss room of the water temple, you change the water level. <laughs> we just change the water level from the upper level to the lowest level in the boss room of the water temple by killing Morpha. I, I'm just glad that we didn't have to use the iron boots at all in this boss fight. <laughs> you could totally see that being a thing where you have to sink down to the bottom of this arena and, and do something down there and then unequip iron boots and then float back up to the top and do something up there and go back and forth. Luckily, we didn't have to do anything silly like that. Anyway, though, that was the entirety of the Water Temple. Thank you so much for watching. That was quite the marathon. I am one of the people that's that, that, that believes that the Water Temple is at least the most confusing and, and sort of back and forth temple uh, in Ocarina of Time. It's really easy to believe that you're done in a room just because you went through it when the water level was at a certain point, but you have to realize that you have to go through a lot of rooms multiple times, and things change when the water level changes. But in any case, next up is going to be the bottom of the well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.